Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. Today is the day that we go to the nether and we build that wither farm. I've been talking about it for far too long. It is time to go over there and build it. Now I finished building it on my server, I put it into a test world and I've been testing it, that's what a test world is for and it's brilliant. I like it, it's an easy to build design. Now I was originally calling this the poor man's wither farm, obviously it's not, <laughs> that's a ridiculous amount of pistons. Um, but what I like about this design is that it's not going to be too intensive on the server with the amount of hoppers that it has and clocks that are going on and it's going to be firing a lot of pistons which is one thing but it's simple to build. The way it's laid out makes it very easy to build and that's what I like compared to the JL design because this thing has ended up being actually quite expensive like that one was as well. Um, but yeah, I've got to gather a load more materials and transport them over. We're going to be making one-way trips and that's the next thing that I'm going to be doing is going over there and just transporting the materials, killing myself when I'm there so I can respawn next to my bed and then bring the rest of the materials over. Now we're going to do this prepared, we're going to bring as many things as we can, make sure we've got everything that we need to build it, because I do not want to be taking trips back and forth. Now I've already depleted my redstone supply, I had four stacks of these, the rest of these have gone into those pistons that you saw, and we're going to need these just to make redstone wires. And I feel sad because all of my redstone's disappearing, but then again it's no use sitting around in a chest, is it? But anyway, I do think I actually have some more redstone because I think Zombie Cleo has actually paid me. Now I was expecting to see a chest at my base, or maybe at hers, as we took a trip over there in the last... Or was it the one before that? It was a couple of episodes ago, and I hate it when it does that, you try and sprint and your screen shakes back and forth. It's really weird, but I think she's actually paid me and left the payment, and there's the spacebar again. Um, over at Dig for Hire, so let's go over there. Oh, it's raining, it's always raining. We won't have to deal with that though, because we're going to be in the Never for most of this episode. Anyway, here is the Dig for Hire building. I think Joe Hills read that and thought it said Dig for Hole or something. <laughs> I don't know, apparently he read it and thought it said Dig a Hole or something like that, which I found amusing. Um, I guess he was probably reading it from the side, because it's kind of hard to read when you look at it like that. Um, so where would my payment be? Ah, there is a chest here. I walked right past it. It has a sign on it. Cleo's payment. Let's have a look. Now, I said that this was too much. I felt like that was too much diamonds for the amount of work that I'd done. I am going to take the stack of gold. I'm going to take half the diamonds and that redstone. But Cleo can have the coal and the rest of those diamonds. I think that's a fair deal right there. The redstone is the most valuable to me. And that is really going to help because we're going to use all of this on the wither farm. So it's nice to know that I still have some redstone in reserve. But anyway, as I said, I need to finish gathering all of those materials and I'll be transporting it over to the Never and I should be back with you when we get there. Oh, why was I not recording? <laughs> I came down here, I've been collecting resources, I've just got myself some vines. I've come down the bottom here to... I can't even remember why I came down here. Uh, but I see this and I think, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll remember to record this later. Had a quick look inside and of course it's a trap and this thing blew up and I don't know how it activated because this is not a trap chest I think there might have been some redstone below it, I'm not actually sure how this was set off but he obviously hid the TNT and the trap down here there's a little bit of redstone left over from it and uh, I am around to sleep I'll go do that right now but yeah <laughs> cheers Kesha so, it has been a long time travelling through the Never, but we have made it, and I have brought all of the supplies over here. I think I've finished putting everything in the chest, so let's have a quick look. So we have lots of cobblestone, more cobblestone and sand, and more sand. So we've got all of those materials back there. Then in these chests we've got random items from when we were last here. I think I put all of the new stuff... Yeah, there's a bit of it over here, but all of the new stuff that we need is in this chest right here. So that's where our goodies are, our pistons, our sticky pistons our tools and all the different things for building this farm, which is going to be a huge project. Now we've got a string in this one here as well, I haven't forgotten about that, and I really did spend a lot of time thinking about just everything I could, and I think I've come over here fairly well prepared, I don't think there's anything I've forgotten. Now I'm going to drink this fire potion because I haven't brought myself more than one set of armour. This time I plan on not dying, which could be quite foolish to be honest. I need to keep a regeneration potion on me and I need to avoid those wither skeletons which can spawn in here. But I think this time as long as I keep chucking down those fire potions I'll be okay because this armour is really good, you know, diamond with protection. Probably could have done with protection 4 now that we know 
And if you didn't see my myth busting episode, make sure to go and watch that. I have been I've been starting myths. In fact, the last two episodes that I've done are based on my own myths, but I've been saying for a long time that protection 4 gets absorbed into the armor, which it doesn't. It doesn't do that at all. It's the amount of damage that you take from something that affects the durability and not the enchantment. Um so go and check out that video if you didn't see it though. There's a bit more information than just that in there. Um, why am I wandering around now? I need to tell you about what's going on here. So this is the bounding box. What I did is I removed the fortress and I put the cobblestone on the very outside of it if I remember correctly. So that means um, every block in here is a block in which a mob can spawn on top of. And we've got some spawning down there so there's proof of that right now. However if you have a block at the top I think the top surface of that is outside of the bounding box so they wouldn't spawn. And do you know what I didn't bring? I didn't bring a looting sword. Let's kill these guys and see if we get a skull. <laughs> didn't bring a looting sword. And I'm building a wither farm. So when I did this before, I can't remember exactly what my plan was. Uh, but looking back at it, you know, if you're going to build a farm here, you're probably going to be dropping down the skeletons. And I don't really need the XP and the bones. I don't know why I'm going over there. Um, it's usually bigger than the box itself. And this thing is going to be a lot bigger. Now, it's going to be a couple of blocks off to one side in that direction, that direction, that one, and that one, and maybe I think a couple of blocks up as well. And then going downwards it's going to go down about 24 blocks because there's going to be a big drop. So if we look at this again, there is a larger area around it that needs to be cleared and now is not the time. <laughs> I wish you could just turn ghasts off sometimes. They are so pesky. There we go, one hit kill. What bow is that? One hit kill on a power one. It was a critical hit I guess. Um, so there is a bigger area to be cleared here. We need to clear around this. We also need to make a big cage around the farm as well so that it won't get destroyed when we're building it. I think I'm going to use iron bars and nether brick for that, although I haven't really decided 100%. And we also have to go all the way down. Now I think, I think it's just above the lava. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do is figure out how big this farm is going to be around the area of this box and go all the way down it could go into the lava but we're going to start off by building the platform at the bottom. So not much progress has been made so far but quite a lot of time has passed by. It's taken me a long time to do little progress and I had to head all the way back again. I threw myself into lava because I forgot to bring some wood with me which is always useful because you can make basic tools out of them and uh, other things as well like a button which is what I needed to make this brewing stand. Now I've done a tutorial on this a long time ago, I'll put a link in the description box. It is an awesome design, very useful, it was made by Kixi and it's pretty awesome. I love the way it works and how compact it is. Uh, at the moment these potions have finished brewing and what's really cool about this is when you press the button you get the potions instantly because they've already been brewed. So I press this, it powers the hopper here which means that those potions can go down into the chest at the bottom, that was the hopper that I clicked on, and then it puts the empty potions, no I'm getting my words completely wrong, it puts the water bottles in there and uh, now that I've taken that out it's put another one in, and then the nether wart and up here you have the magma cream and the redstone. And so the bottles filter in from up here, I've got a double chest up the top to store loads of potions so every time that I come in here I can come along and grab three potions out of this chest, after I press the button of course. Um, but let me show you what I've done so far. Let's chug one of these down as well. The reason I'm going to need so many fire potions is because there is a lava lake below this block and we have to go into it by three blocks. Now I'm not going to go all the way down there because it's a pain to get back up and I haven't sorted out a solution for that. What I think I'm going to do is actually put a ladder inside the nether fortress. That seems like a good idea. And I'm just getting a little bit paranoid as to where that ghast is. Um, so down there. That is where I have to dig down by three blocks. That means I have to place loads of cobblestone and then remove it after which is going to be a pain and I have to do that for an area that's even bigger than this because the farm itself it's going to go all the way down to the bottom there and it's going to go around the outside of this area as well and then we're going to build up big walls so it's a massive amount of work to be done uh, but now we are prepared to do it. So I would say this has been going pretty well so far nothing too unusual to report on although I do have something funny to show you over there but let's go down and have a look. Now this went three blocks down into the lava and I could have just thrown an ender pearl to get down there and it's all been done. So this goes eight blocks in each direction out from the edge of the bounding box and that means that we can build up walls here and we can fit everything that we need down the bottom here. So that includes 
the falling bits, the crusher traps, and then we're going to have to put cactus around the outside as well to kill all of these magma cubes. Now these things are going to be a huge problem. They've been a pain in the arse while I've been building, um, but these guys, they don't die when they're in lava, they don't despawn as well unless you're over 128 blocks away from them. Now with other mobs it's different. If you're I think at least 24 or 16 blocks away from them then there is a small chance that they can despawn and the further away you go the bigger the chance is until you get to 128 blocks at which they will instantly despawn. But like with slimes the rules are different from magma cubes and that distance is a lot shorter. And I have come all the way down here without any blocks. I've just finished putting them into the chest. So I'm going to take a few of these because I want to pop over the wall here. Now the problem with magma cubes not despawning and not being able to die in lava lakes is if you look around here, let's say one spawns over the edge there and it jumps down into the lava, then it's going to stay in the lava. And that is a big problem. Now one of the things we could do is go 128 blocks away and sort of stand around and then head back here and all of the ones in the lava will have disappeared. Look, there's one over there. If he starts tracking me, he's going to come towards me and go in the lava. And so when I started building this, there were actually quite a few of them down here um, under the lava that I could see. And the way you can see them is their particle effects. And at the moment, I really can't see anything, so I think they may have despawned. But that would go against what I've been saying. I don't know. They've disappeared. I think they've just gone to a different location. Now, when I was doing all of this, it's very hard to see the cobblestone, as you can see here. So I thought, why don't I try taking a night vision potion? And that actually makes it worse, because now everything is brighter, and you have to be even closer to the cobblestone to see it. So that kind of backfired. Um, but the nether looks really nice when you have a night vision potion. Look at that. You can definitely see a lot more of it. Get a good idea of what you can do to uh, increase the rates in this farm around here. There's some floating islands over there that wouldn't take too much effort to blow up. A little bit there. Some of this you could just lower down so the lava goes over the top of it and then you'd be increasing the rates. Uh, but there is still a massive amount of work to do. This took me a long time and this is just such a small part of what needs to be done. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is half slab the floor so no mobs can spawn on it. There was a funny incident where I came down here and a gar spawned right where I threw my enderpearl, so I spawned right next to him. It was pretty funny. Uh, but the whole time that I've been down there, mobs have been spawning in the bounding box up top. So this is going to be quite funny. These mobs should still be there, but there was loads. You can hear them now. Loads of magma creams up here last time I checked. Magma cubes, even. I'm... I actually think there's less of them now. There was about five of the big guys, I'm sure of it. And because they can't despawn, the whole time we've been working down there, if any spawn in this box, then they just stay in this box, which is pretty funny. I think I'm actually going to try and keep it like that from now on and see how many uh, there are when we get to this bit and we have to take it apart. But the next thing for me to do is to start building the walls. Let's throw an ender pearl so we can get down there quickly. Yep, so I've got to build up the walls going all the way up and half slab the floor as well. So the half slabbing has been done, but I think I've underestimated the walls around the outside. Now we've got some zombie pigmen in here. I think they've spawned on the edges up here and fallen down onto the half slabs because of course they can't spawn on them. But when I go back up there and get some more supplies, these guys should despawn and we don't want any mobs in here now. This is going to be a safe area and when we build the walls around the outside it's going to make building the wither farm a lot easier. But those walls, they have really been underestimated. I've just been thinking about how big these are going to be. So the bounding box is 19 blocks wide, and then we have another 9 blocks in each direction, I think. So that's 37 in total. So 37 blocks wide going all the way up above the height of that bounding box up there. And then in this direction, it's another 19 blocks as well, because we have two bounding boxes. So that's another 19 blocks on top of that. That's 56 or something like that which is absolutely crazy. Now I also want to make these walls look good so we could just build them up with cobblestone going all the way up and it probably wouldn't take as long as you'd think but it wouldn't look very nice so I want to do this the proper way we're going to use some iron bars, some stone bricks and some netherrack and I've already built this in a creative world on my server so we're going to go have a look at that and I'm also going to calculate how many materials we are going to need to build this. So here we are on my creative server. This is what I have designed with the help from some people who were online. And it is <laughs> it is really a huge build. And this is just the cage for the wither farm that is going to go inside of it. Now I've calculated how many materials. Here's Kivan. 
how many materials are uh, going into this. There are 2,280 nether brick blocks, 1,776 stone bricks, and then the iron bars, 3,780. So I calculated how many iron blocks that would be. 157 and a half iron blocks is going to go to this. That is over two stacks right there of just iron blocks alone going into this build. And you know what? The wither farm itself is going to be a huge build, but even the cage that goes around it is going to be pretty, pretty impressive, I think. So it's time for me to stop babbling on about it and start building. So the first wall has been finished. This is the longer side. It goes all the way down to the bottom there. And right after I finish building all of this, I notice a slight mistake at the top here. These double bricks are supposed to be in the middle. So that box there is slightly bigger and that one is slightly smaller, which I will fix in a moment. But there you go. That took me quite some time to do. And I think what I want to do next is put the slabs here at the top going all the way across this area here, which should hopefully help shield me from the ghast, which have been harassing me constantly whilst building this. Now, I have now died my first, what I'm going to call legitimate death, because the other ones were intentional to go back and get more materials. I was on the top corner here and a ghast hit me and I fell down into the lava. Now, that's happened a couple of times. That's been fine. I've always kept some fire resistance potions on me, but this time I drunk all of them and just forgotten to restock, which was really unfortunate because I just had to admit defeat and drown in the lava. Now I lost a really good sword, I lost my armour as well, which I had a backup pair anyway. And the sword that I lost though was Sharpness 5 and Unbreaking 3, which I'm kind of annoyed at because it's hard to get Unbreaking 3 on a book. And you know what? 1.7 is almost here, and when it comes out. Ah, let's just get to safety. <laughs> yeah, when that comes out, we'll be able to get unbreaking on items uh, when you enchant them naturally, and that's swords and things like that. And by the way, I built a little smelting operation around the back here. I see a lot of redstone-based smelters and furnace arrays and things like that, and you know what? Sometimes it's just easier to simplify it. For what I need right here is just to have tons of cobblestone smelting all the time. So I filled up a bunch of lava buckets which I put in the back here. You can see we've actually gone through all of those. Uh, they are they are 100 uses I think for each one. And at the moment one's being used and as soon as that's finished it's going to use this one and then the bucket is going to go down into the chest down here so you can see there's groups of buckets. It's interesting how it puts them like that instead of grouping them together. And then at the top here we've just got these um, hoppers full of cobblestone and then chests above for more of them which is pretty cool it looks like they get evenly distributed but I probably need to top that up otherwise these buckets aren't going to be fully used so anyway um, that is the little furnace array right there as I said I'm going to put the roof across the top and then I'm going to start removing some of the things in the middle here because I am now out of nether brick and I shouldn't really be out here but let's go in this direction so these bits here are in the way and they're nether brick and I need nether brick so I'm going to take these apart um, that over there and the stuff on the other side and all of this underneath all this nether brick we're going to need to build the rest of this well 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 it is done I did not need as much nether brick as I thought I would so I managed to build all of this without taking these bits apart now if we have a quick look up there at the bounding box you can see I've kind of removed some of the stuff around the outside and what I've actually done is I've dug down to this kind of point which is a couple of blocks below the cobblestone and then inside that box I've left a couple of markers so I know where to go and dig down so at some point what I'll do in between episodes is go up there and I'll know exactly where to dig down it take me to the bit below and then I can dig these columns going all the way down to the bottom and take those out one at a time but let's just stand back and have a look at this this really does obscure the view but if I go around we'll try and have a look at all the sides obviously it all looks how it's supposed to be. I don't think I've made any mistakes. I haven't actually gone round and done a final check yet. Uh, but I guess that's what we're doing right now. And as you can imagine, this took me a ton of time. And I was thinking while I was doing it, you know, how is it that I can stay so ma motivated to do something like this? And of course, it is you guys, you know, when you see things like this getting done in the videos, you guys make this happen. You really do. With the comments and the likes and just giving me feedback on the videos and keeping me motivated to play it really makes a huge difference because what I'm thinking about when I'm doing all of this is you know reading my comments and seeing the feedback on the video I really look forward to it and because of that I'm able to grind through big projects like this and it made me wonder what would it be like if I didn't have an audience while I was playing this game 
and I wondered if I would have stopped playing by now, you know. Um, there becomes a point where playing the game isn't quite as fun because you can watch other people play it and you see all these wonderful things that other people do and you know when you play it by yourself you're the only person that ever sees that but when you've got an audience of people watching you then you know it's going to be shared with people and they're going to enjoy it too and that is just hugely motivating and that really got me through this project now I'm not going to do any more I'd say for the amount of time I spent doing the cage alone I actually would have thought I'd been able to do the whole thing so I greatly underestimated uh, the construction of this but this cage looks amazing and I can't wait to get rid of this nether brick as well because it's obscuring the view but you can see the size and scale of it. And I've also put the roof on as well as you can see. Now I don't really have too much to report on about when I was building it. Um, there was a load of netherrack in this corner here. If you look up there you can see the netherrack on the other side. That took me a fair amount of time to go through. I went through one of these picks. I haven't died and I'm sure a couple of funny things happened. I just can't remember at the moment. But what I think we should do is go exploring for a good location to have a look at this from another angle. Well, take a look at that view. I think that looks really cool. Now, it's not the most grandiose of structures. It's a big box, but it's kind of got a mysterious look about it, which I like. And it'll probably look a lot cooler when the farm's built inside, because there'll be lights and redstone torches and stuff going on and on, and it'll probably look really interesting from a distance. But we have just scratched the surface today. I mean, we've got to build the farm, and once the farm has been built, I guess it'll be operational, but there'll be a lot of work to do around the outside here. I want to remove some of the spawnable space around here and if you look at the scale of this place it's probably going to make a marginal difference. However if we remove these bits of nether fortress that are obscuring the view and some other spawnable areas around here I think we can make a big difference. Now the kind of stuff that I want to remove are little islands like that down there and also places like this back here although this is further away so it's probably not going to affect it as much. But if you have a look here, you can see there's a lot, of, a lot of spawnable spaces just above that netherrack. And if you remove all of that right there, you move a couple hundred spawnable spaces. Whereas compared to things like what I'm standing on, this is just netherrack going all the way down to the lava lake or even down to bedrock. So it would take tons of TNT and time and effort just to remove a small amount of spawnable area compared to bits like that. So obviously I'm not looking to build a complete perimeter. I'm just going to be smart and go around and remove some spaces where the time is worthwhile. But we got a lot done this episode, we built the cage, I was planning on doing the whole thing in one go, never really works out like that though does it, and next episode we should be starting a new project over in 1.7, a community project, we're going to be building a new hermit town, however things don't always work out how you expect, so it might not be in the next episode uh, that I show you that, but that is something that we're doing very soon, um, so you're going to have that to look forward to. So here it is from the opposite side. We were over there a moment ago, and that ghast is going to start shooting at me any moment now. Oh, I really hate ghast. <laughs> but have a look at all the land that we cut into here. Yeah, quite a lot, and it's the netherrack like this that isn't worth removing. So what we're probably going to do over here is just half slab all of this area, and that should make a little bit of difference. But it will make a lot of difference in the long run. Oh, and now I'm walking in fire again. <laughs> but there is one last thing that I would like to mention this episode. Now, when playing on my server... There is a little guy. Uh, when playing on my server recently, I don't know how it got to it, but the conversation of music and DJing came up. Now, I'd say my passion in life is music. I am an avid music fan. And we got talking about DJing, and so I think I'm going to be doing some DJing on this weekend. I'm going to make a playlist and uh, put that up on a website called plug.dj, which is like a live music streaming thing. I haven't actually used it yet, other people have just told me about it. And so I thought I'd mention it in my video that I'm going to be doing that. Now, fair warning, I like music that is loud and obnoxious. I'm a fan of heavy metal and hip-hop and loud electronic music and stuff like that. And so what I'll be DJing probably isn't everybody's cup of tea. tea. <laughs> and I think I'm going to start off with a hip-hop set, but I don't know, I'm going to be doing a bit of DJing on the weekend when playing on my server. Everyone, of course, is welcome to listen and play on the server as well. And I'll be posting the details of that on my Twitter. So if you don't follow me on Twitter, then maybe a reason to follow me if you're interested in uh, listening to me doing some DJing. And I haven't done something like that before as well, but I'm really looking forward to it. You know, picking some of my favourite songs and putting a set together. It should be a lot of fun. Um, but that is it this episode. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do give it a like. I've got a lot of work done and as I said earlier, you know, that stuff is hugely motivating to do these kind of projects and before long 
I'll build that wither farm and we'll have ourselves some wither skulls and beacons. It's going to be epic once we get this farm done. <laughs> it's taking so much more time than I thought it would. But anyway, I'm babbling on, so it's time for me to say goodbye. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.